ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار إن شاء الله today we gonna I'm going to inshallah put forward some points regarding uh, the things which are prohibited or disliked uh, and many people do not know about it. So it's not only prohibited, prohibited or disliked. Uh, point number one on my list is blowing on food and drink or to breathe in the vessel and ibn abbas qala naha rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an al nafkh fi al ta'am wa al sharab ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu narrated that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prohibited blowing upon food or drink uh, the word Nafakh, nafakh is used for blowing. And then there is something else which is called as tanafus, which is breathe. In the other hadith, in another hadith, Abdullah bin Abi Qatada and Abi, he narrated, Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ida shariba ahadukum fala yatanafas fil ina. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, If one of you drinks, then let him not breathe into the container. Now, one thing, one is blowing and the other thing is breathing. Both are not permissible. For example, if we have a cup of tea, water, I mean, warm water, something, we are not supposed to blow in that. And at the same time, when we are drinking it, when we drink it, we are not allowed to breathe in the vessel, whether it's a glass or it's, you know, the old vessel or something. So, to blow and also to breathe, both are not allowed. There is a third thing which is called nafath, which is, uh, you know, to spittle, like when you, for example, when you go to sleep, what you do is you recite the Mu'awidat, Quluhu Allahu Hat, Quluhu Adhra Bil Fala, Quluhu Adhra Bil Nas. And before that you do what? You, you spittle. This is different. This is not blowing. This, some scholar says, if anyone do nafat on water for ruqya, there is no problem. This is not blowing. This is different than the blowing. Shaykh ibn Uthameen, rahimullah, he said in Sharh Riyadh al-Salihin, that that is because if a person blows into the vessel, some harmful things, yani about blowing he mentioned, that some harmful things may come with the air that is exalted, such as disease and the like. But some of the scholars made an exception in cases of necessity, such as if the drink is hot and he needs to drink it quickly. There can be some cases. In that case, some scholars, not all, granted a concession. But it is better not to blow on it even if it is hot. If it is hot and he has another vessel, then he may pour some of it into that vessel, then pour it back until it cools down. That's the statement of, uh, that's the translation of the statement of Sheikh uh, bin Uthaymeen rahimahullah. So uh, many of us know about it, but you know, it's, it's a reminder because 
sometimes you do not differentiate between breathing and blowing and also the you know the nafas that uh, that you do for ruqya mostly point number 2 is laughing at someone after he passes wind and this is uh, something which is very common with our kids you know when we when we are with them or when we are with our friends and we hear them passing the wind we laugh let us see what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us about it an jabir qala naha rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam an dhahiki min ad-dartah aw huraira reported uh, Okay, yeah, there are two hadith. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited us from laughing at someone who passes wind. In another narration of Bukhari and Muslim, uh, which is narrated by Abdullah bin Zama, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam admonished them for laughing at the passing of wind and said, "Why does one of you laugh at what he does? Because this is something natural." and an-nawawi rahimahullah he said commentary on this hadith this and indicates that it is not allowed to laugh when one hears someone else break wind rather he should ignore it and carry on with whatever he was doing without paying any attention to it or anything else and pretend that he did not hear anything this is a good manners and proper conduct with others now we know that it's it's uh, you know it's not allowed to laugh but then to pretend that we did not hear it or so that the other person may not feel bad or shame we also try to pretend that we did not hear it this is also a good manner with another brother because now okay having said that is there yani uh anyone you know maybe we we hear someone like there are some old people at home or maybe you know there are some people who are having disease you know they they pass wind and you know you hear you sit with them or something so what happens maybe they may, they may feel embarrassed when you're sitting with them so feeling embarrassment you know after passing the wind it's a normal feeling why because now in our uh what do you call customs or in 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 our society this ha- uh, is uh seen as a bad habit bad manner that when you want to pass wind you're not uh taking care of you you know where you're sitting you just pass the wind and you just forget about you know who's sitting uh with you so avoiding is avoiding it is important and no doubt deliberately passing wind in front of people without any excuse without any excuse is content uh, contrary to modesty and decency and a decent person a modest person would not like to show this kind of merit uh, kind of thing to anyone uh, whom he is sitting with that's why the scholars of the standing committee you know because there are people you know you know we have seen this in our college time and stuff that there were people who were making fun of this you know they are sitting and then one person is doing the other person is laughing they're not taking it you know uh, they're not taking care about the good manners or how one should behave with others so the scholars of standing committee for issuing fatwas were asked about it that's the committee in saudi arabia group of scholars major scholars they were asked nowadays unfortunately it happens that people get together and they do not refrain from passing wind and they laugh at it as if they find it funny if they are told to stop doing this blameworthy act they say it is better than burping and so on and that there is no evidence to suggest that it is not allowed how should we respond to them may allah reward you they replied the group of scholars they replied it is not permissible to break wind 
deliberately or to laugh at that because it is contrary to decency and dignified manners. That is not like burping because burping usually happens involuntarily and people do not laugh at it. But if a person passes wind naturally without doing it deliberately, there is, there is nothing wrong with that and it is not permissible to laugh at it. Because it is proven that Abdullah ibn Zama'a, the Prophet said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam forbade laughing at what comes out of one naturally. This is the end quote. Now, with regard to passing wind, one should, okay, not laugh on others, but at the same time, uh, one should have good manners and should not try to, you know, pass wind in front of others. Like for example, when we are teaching our kids that we should not laugh on other kids or your friends or any other fam family members, then we should also teach them that you should not do it in front of anyone. So that, you know, because not everyone is aware of the sunnah. Not everyone is taking care of, you know, what is mentioned in the sunnah. And many of us, maybe, you know, we came to know when we came to this halakha that this is also something which we should be taking care of. So, this is something also which a Muslim should avoid and which is not known by many people. Point number three, to frighten a Muslim, to scare. Now to frighten someone like, you know, the kids usually do it, standing behind the door, someone comes boo, and you know, these are small, small things, but it can be easily avoided when we teach our children from the beginning. Maybe we are not doing it, but we can implement, implement it at our houses. Now, also to frighten your friend by hiding their things. Now, this is common. Maybe also us elders, you know, sometimes we find, found someone mobile, someone's mobile, has hide it. Why? Just for fun. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. And we'll, we'll, we'll see the hadith. Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla said, the companions of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa told us that they were traveling with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa A man among them fell asleep and some of them went and took his arrows. When the man woke up, he got alarmed because his arrows were missing and the people laughed. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, what are you laughing at? They said, nothing except that we took the arrows and he, could, uh, he got alarmed. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is not permissible for a Muslim to frighten another Muslim. It is not permissible for a Muslim to frighten another Muslim. So, uh, likewise, when you're trying to scare someone, to frighten someone, what happens sometimes the lies, you know, you, you lie also. The lie is also, lie is also involved in your, you know, uh, joking with the friends. And that is sometimes is taken very lightly by most of us. Like for example, especially in the teenage, you have something called as April Fool and, yeah. Okay, you tell to the other friend, the other the person got into an accident or something like that. So you're not only frightening them, but also you're lying to them. And what uh, we all know that even with the kids, even with the kids, and this is very, very, very common, that if let's say someone visited your place, maybe you're not lying to your kids, but maybe it's your relatives, maybe brothers, uncle, someone else, they come, they visit, they lie to your kids. Okay, you know what? this and this and this and that and we are there. So maybe we, maybe that is not the right time that you know, you advise them or something. But as a Muslim, we should advise them in secret. We should tell them that, you know, we are not teaching them like this and also uh, tell our children about uh, not to lie when you make fun or you joke. Because most of the jokes that we have nowadays, it includes lies. So may Allah uh, protect us. Point number four is force feeding the sick. 
that is something which uh, I also came across very recently. I mean, I, I was not aware about. When I was preparing for it, then only then I came to know about this, honestly. Force feeding the sick, the person who is sick, you are forcefully feeding him. An Uqba bin Amir al Juhni, قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, لا تكرهوا مرضاكم على الطعام على الطعام والشراب فإن الله يطعمهم ويسقيهم. أقبى ابن عامر الجهني said the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said do not force your sick sick ones to eat or drink. Allah will feed them and give them drink. This hadith. Uh, is there in Tirmidhi, Ibn Majah and also uh, it is Hassan, graded by Shaykh Al-Albani. Now this is something which is very common. You know, when, when we see our sick ones, maybe especially if they are admitted to hospital or something and they are not eating something, we try to force them, no, eat. Well, there could be many reasons why they are not eating. You know, I mean, SubhanAllah, I was going through it and I came uh, there was a whole, uh, they, they explained it so well that they also told the medical aspect of that, you know, I mean, of, of it. That we are thinking that the patient is not eating or drinking, it may be harmful for him. Let us see like, what, what, uh, what was mentioned, inshallah. Now, what we can do is we can encourage the patient to eat or drink, but we should not force him that you have to. Eat or drink. Because the people who think that if a patient will not eat or drink, they may be thinking that he will become weak and sometimes it happens. But you need to uh, find out the other, you know, uh, other way also like why it is not very important. Ibn al-Qayyim, who was also called as, you know, one of the doctor of his time. He mentioned in Zad al Ma'at, Fi Hadi Khair al Ibad, some prominent doctors said what great benefit this prophetic advice contains because it is based on divine wisdom, especially for doctors and those who treat the sick. That is because, because if the patient does not feel like eating or drinking, it is because his body is preoccupied with fighting the sickness or because his appetite is not there or it is weak because his internal heat is weak or very low. Whatever the case, it is not permissible to give him food in that case when he is in that condition. It should be noted that hunger in the result of different parts of the body seeking nour uh, nourishment because nature seeks to replace what is used up of them. So the furthest parts of the body are pulled towards the closer parts until that pulling reaches the stomach whereupon the individual feels hungry and will therefore seek food. But when there is sickness in the body, the body will naturally be preoccupied with dealing with its cause, fighting it and expelling it and will not be interested in seeking food or drink. But if the patient is forced to eat or drink, this is all by Ibn al-Qayyim, huh? then the natural defenses of the body will stop working and will begin to focus on digesting the food and disturbing the uh, nutrients and it will not be able to focus on fighting the substance that caused the sickness and warding it off. Thus that will be the cause of harm to the patient." End quote. Now this is mentioned by one of the scholars of our time who was also you know, uh, in the field of medicine. So he mentioned the wisdom behind it and even if this wisdom was not mentioned, the hadith itself was enough for us. But if let's say, you know, it's very difficult to make people understand, especially at the situation when their elder one in, in is, in, 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 is in a very, you know, bad condition or situation. Having said that, if the doctors, they say that, you know, it's, it's very important for them to eat, otherwise it will be harmful for their health, you know, the specialist doctors, that's a different thing. I'm talking in general that, you know, you know, when you have your son, let's say your son, your daughter at home, they're not eating, not drinking, they're sick. 
So we as parents what happened to us? We feel like you know, what is happening, they are not eating, drinking means something is going wrong, not necessary. But if let us say you know they are getting so weak that it is harmful for their health and the doctors tell them that, told, tell you that you know you make him, you force him somehow to eat, that is a different story. So in general the rule is that we do not force the patient to eat or drink if he does not like to. Point number 5, taking some someone's thing in just while like joking or something. Uh, and Abdullah and Abdullah ibn Sa'ib and Abi and Jaddihi qala sami'tu Rasulullah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yani yaqul la ya'khudhu ahadukum mata'a sahibihi la'iban wa la jaddan fa idha akhadha ahadukum asa sahibihi falyaruddaha ilayhi Abdullah ibn Sa'ib Abdullah ibn Sa'ib reported that his grandfather said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu wasallam say, none of you should take the goods of his companion either in jest you know, while joking or seriously. When one of you takes his companion's staff, the stick, asa, he should return it to him. This is also something you know which we do while you know make making fun or something or take it, you do this. SubhanAllah, these are very small things and honestly speaking while preparing for it some of the things I came across for the first time. So it is, I thought like it will be beneficial for the others also that you know since there is a hadith for that we should avoid doing those things which can be easily you know which we can easily avoid it. So uh, sometimes you know with the friends while joking we take their mobile or we take the other things. You know, we are not talking about hiding or you know frightening them. That was a different hadith. It's not about frightening. It's frightening. It's about you know taking their things even while fun. You know, sometimes a person you know he feel bad. He does not tell you. He's feeling that you no, know, I want it. Not every one. Every person is of the same nature. Yeah. So uh, you should try to avoid it. Also with the kids, you know, we we do it with the kids. We play or play around with the kids. Try to avoid those things which is clearly mentioned in the, in the hadith to you know to avoid. Point number six: Imam praying the Imam, not the normal people. Imam praying the Sunnah or Nawafil at the same place where he performed the Fard. Now, for example, you are leading the Salah. It can happen. Maybe while you are traveling, maybe you know with your family, anything. Praying the Sunnah or Nawafil at the same, same place where you perform the Fard. This is a different hadith than what you are thinking. It was narrated from Mughira bin Shu'bah. La yusalli al-imamu fi al-mawdi al-ladhi salla fihi al-maktubah hatta yatahawwal. It was narrated from Al-Mughira bin Shu'bah that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Imam should not pray in the place where he offered the obligatory prayer until he moves aside. From some of the companions and Salaf, it is proven that they used to pray in the slain place. But it could be because they want to show the permissibility of doing it. Yeah. You know, sometimes an act itself is not something which is recommended. But it is just to show that it is permissible. So it is, but it is still, it is better to avoid it. Why? Because we think they, uh, you know, because the hadith, it shows that, you know, it is something which we should not do it. And the other hadith which you were thinking about, it is different from the other hadith where it is mentioned that one should not pray the nawafil right after the first prayer until he speaks in between or he changes the place, right? This is different. So that, that was, this is only for the Imam, that is for all. Okay, point number 7, to praise at someone's face, this is very important that we, we should be careful about, to praise at someone's face. 
عن معاوية قال سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول إياكم والتمادح فإنه الذبح It, won, it was narrated that Muawiyah radiallahu anhu said, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, say, beware of praising one another, for it is a dhabh, slaughtering one another. But, but, but if there is, let's say if there is a pious person, a scholar that you know that, you know, he's very humble and, you know, he's, he's known for his zuhud or something, and you know that, you know, this person, if, for example, when some scholar comes, yeah, they visit us, you mention something about them, maybe to, uh, you know, encourage others to, you know, to seek knowledge, to reach to that level or to mention the virtues of, about, of the scholars. Maybe if you, if you say something, you praise them, that is okay. But of course, if you know that, you know, that his mind will not be, you know, I mean, because, subhanAllah, yani, I've seen some people, when you praise them, they started praising themselves. So that is something which is very dangerous. So that is why the Prophet ﷺ said, don't do this, it's like slaughtering your brother. Yeah. Uh, yani, but it is allowed, why I said that it is allowed? Because Prophet ﷺ mentioned in front of all the people in the majlis, that I have not benefited with anyone's, anyone's money more than that of Abu Bakr. Not, nobody's money benefited me so much so that uh, as much as the, uh, Abu Bakr's money. So Abu Bakr, what did he do? He stood up in front of everyone and he said, Oh Allah's messenger, me and my money, it's all yours. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, this shows that, you know, sometimes if it is needed, it can be said. But in general, we should avoid it because we do not know the other person's mind. You know, he, he may uh, fall into ujub. You know what is ujub? Thinking about himself and he has done something very good. He's, you know, better than others. So to avoid it, to avoid it is always the best. But let's say if there are some sort, some scholars who visit it or something and you say something about them just for their virtue or something and you know that, you know, nothing will, it will not be harmful for them. The important thing is it will not be harmful for the person who, whom you are praising. Then you may say it. But for others like us, better avoid it. Uh, there is another hadith on an, Abi Bakara. Qala. أثني رجل على رجل Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll mention the hadith in English. Narrated Abu Bakr, a man praised another man in front of the Prophet. The Prophet Wasallam said thrice, وَيْلَكَ Woe on you! You have cut the neck of your brother. The Prophet Wasallam added, If it is indispensable, is indispensable for anyone of you to praise a person, then he should say, I think that such and such person is so and so and Allah is the one who will take his account as he knows his reality. And if you are saying, say, I think that he's, this person is good and this and that, but don't just directly say it. And none can sanctify anybody before Allah and that only if he knows well about that person. Not anyone. You, you met the person maybe for the first time, you saw him, you know, taking notes and everything. You don't know him. Not for any person. Maybe you know a person, maybe you know some student of knowledge who are really good, okay, maybe sometimes. Point number eight, rejecting the gift. This is also something which one should not do. Uh, especially if we know that a person's income is halal and he is not giving you it as a bribe, you know, it's not, a, it's hadiyah is different than bribe, yeah. Because nowadays we call hadiyah bribe, same thing. Someone asked me a question, I remember. Uh, can I give hadiyah for something, you know? And he, he tried to, he was trying to mean like, you know, he wanted to give bribe basically. I'll give just hadiyah. You call it hadiyah, you call it anything, it is bribe. 
you know, I mean you just wanted to get your work done to pay him, you know, you just pay him, you call it hadiyah, no, no, this is not allowed. And it is not allowed if someone is doing it with you. Someone is telling us, okay, you take it and you do this for me, which is not, you know, the, ri the right way of course. So taking it as a bribe or on top of debt, you took debt from someone, right? No, you gave, sorry, you gave debt to someone and then on top of that, he is giving you hadiyya, gifts and we know that this is one kind of riba, yeah. So if that is not the case, then you, you accept the gift, no matter what. And Abdullah and in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Abdullah bin Masood radiallahu anhu, and in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam qal, ajibu da'i wala tarud, wala taruddu al hadiyya, wala tadribu al muslimin. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud narrated that the Prophet said, accept invitations, do not refuse gift, gifts and do not beat the Muslims. And another hadith, in another hadith, Khalid bin Uday al-Juhni reported, whoever receives a gift from his brother, when he did not ask for it, nor did he wish for it, then he should accept the gift and not return it because it is a provision sent by Allah. This is this hadith it is, is in Sahih Targheeb and Silsila Sahih. So even if you get a small gift or maybe of something very, you know, uh, which is not having any value, low quality, maybe a friend of yours, yeah, he's rich latest iPhone, maybe the new 2023 model car, he has everything and he gives you something as a gift which is of no value. I say like, what has he given me as a gift? No. You got the gift, khalas, take it. You are not accepting it at the first place, right? So take it, no matter whatever it is. Even if it's a small gift, take it. Because I have seen it in uh, in the families usually what happens that you know someone sends the gift now people start comparing the gift they said okay i got this gift from this brother and another brother he sent me this thing see how good this gift is and see how what the other gift is low quality cheap and this and that no someone send you the gift appreciate it be humble don't compare the gift with others. Once the Prophet ﷺ, he gave a gift to Umar He gave something as a gift. And Umar he was a rich person. Okay. So he said, he replied to Prophet ﷺ saying that, uh, O oh Rasulullah, give it to someone who is needy. And Prophet ﷺ, he said, no, you take it. If you get something without asking for it, then you take it. This is what Prophet ﷺ replied to him. Sometimes, yani we, we, you know, uh, even you know, we don't like to take the gift saying that maybe, okay, fine, we take the gift. Why? Maybe I have to return back the gift or something. No, don't worry about it. Take it and yes, of course, it's always best that you return with at least something equal or better than what you got. But take the gifts. Don't reject it, don't refuse it for uh, no reason. Point? After, after uh, yani he is returning back to you the whole amount, and he's giving you something as a gift. What are you expecting it? No. Then it's not riba. It's, it's allowed because it's proven from the Prophet. Yes. If it is not in the urf, yes. if it is not common in the urf, that you know people when they have to return back the amount and they should give something extra, if this is not known, okay, within the society, then it's okay. 
because at that time at that time i think there were there were some narrations that people they used to know that when you got something you know as karth when you return back you should give something extra if it was it is known in the society if it is not known here and you know it's it's a gesture that you know okay fine you you yes that you help me so i give you something as a gift something extra that's okay if it is not known point number 9 to stand at the time of iqama before the imam comes uh an abi qatada qala qala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam inshallah there are 10 points only the last point will be uh, the next will be the last inshallah idha uqimat as-salatu fala taqumu hatta tarawni qad kharajt abu qatada reported allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam as saying when the iqama is pronounced do not get up till you see i have come out now there are different opinions on this that when one should stand up exactly should it be in the beginning when the iqama when the muadhin start to pronounce the iqama or should it be in the middle or when he says hayya ala salah hayya ala falah or uh, but this hadith seems to be you know shows the strongest opinion which is when the, when you see the imam you stand up especially nowadays as you all have noticed here especially in kuwait that you know when the imam is not here and the clock is ticking you see the seconds 59 58 50 54 stand up wait for some time let the imam come maybe he's busy maybe he's in the toilet he got you know one or two minutes late what happens the people the they they started looking at the muaddin and trying to apply pressure are you going to say iqama or no say it someone should lead you lead it well, no problem if we spend 5 10 minutes more in the masjid it will not you know, nothing will happen everything will you know uh, inshallah will be smooth no issues so one should not go and stand up directly but yes for example you came and you reach at the time when it's only 1 minute remaining and according to the opinion that you should pray tahiyatul masjid which i also follow then you should stand up and do what do dua no problem but don't look at imam or muaddin or you know just try to uh, give them an indication that please start something like that okay last point is to drink water while standing to drink water while standing okay before i start mentioning about the hadith there is difference of opinion about this whether it is allowed to stand while standing or not uh anas radhiyallahu anhu he reported naha uh, that uh, انه نهى عن ان يشرب الرجل قائما that he reported that prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam forbade us from drinking while standing qatada reported we asked him what about eating he said that is even worse or maybe he said more detestable two words ashar aw akhbath in another narration Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم uh Anas رضي الله عنه he said he rebu- rebuked us zajara he rebuked us reprimanded us for drinking while standing then you have another narration which is from Abu Hurairah Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه he said that he saw a man drinking standing up in front of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم So Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said to him he was a Bedouin person okay vomit it out vomit it out the man the Bedouin person he said why he صلى الله عليه وسلم said would it please you that a cat drank along with you in the same vessel the man answered no the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said for indeed someone 
more evil than a cat drank along with you and that is shaitan and there is another hadith in which yeah in which uh, the hadith in sahih muslim in which the prophet sallallahu said la yashrabanna ahadun minkum qa'iman faman nasiya falyastaqi Abu Huraira narrated, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, none of you should drink while standing in, and if anyone forgets, he must vomit. Now, there are different ahadiths and you know the scholar, I know there is a different debate on this matter. They say that Ali Radhi alone who he showed, he said like you know it's allowed. I saw Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi doing it. But in fiqh we have you know one, one qaida which is very important. That the speech of the Prophet is having more preference than his action. You know, the speech, the hadith qawli which he gave, he, he told us to do. And subhanAllah, he also mentioned us the reason. And in the third hadith, he said, if none of you should drink while standing, and if anyone forgets, he must vomit. So, Come, and if you see, if you come across all the hadith, Shaykh Al Albani and all, also the other scholars is of this opinion that it, it you know, the hadith shows so much strictness that it, it is something which is not allowed. One should avoid doing it. And especially when you all know, we are hearing this thing again and again that Al, al, uh, al Khuruj min al Khilaf Mustahab. Getting out of the differences, difference of opinion is recommended. So let's say you have one opinion which says that it is allowed uh, to, to drink while standing. Of course, we are not talking about sitting now. Sitting according to them is recommended. Those scholars who say that it is allowed while standing, allowed to drink while standing, they say it is still, it is recommended to sit and drink. They don't say that, you know, it is better to uh, drink while standing. And then you have another opinion which says that it is forbidden to drink while standing. Of course, based on the evidences. And you should only do it while sitting. So it's always best that you get out of the khilaf, out of the difference of opinion. And subhanallah, this third hadith, uh, when I went to Mecca, Shaykh uh, Dr. Wasiullah Abbas, he is also of the same opinion. He mentioned this hadith and subhanAllah, I, I tried to search it on his videos that, okay, when, where did he see it? Because I could not recall the hadith. So, yani, it shows so much strictness that you vomit it out. And see, even if there are something which is dislike, what we know, we don't see it that much strictness with those things. At least I don't know anything about any other, you know, action or any other uh, thing that you do on which Prophet showed so so much strictness. So one, he rebuked the companion. Second, he told us, you know, that Shaitan is drinking with you. Third, he said, vomit it out even if you forget. So this shows some sort of strictness. So Allahu alam. The now Ibn al Qayyim he said, uh, khalas, forget about it. Now you say, like, we are talking so much about medicine, forget about it. Or he also said that, that is, there is harmful effect also when you stand while drinking, uh, drink while standing. Sorry, so, uh, yeah, that's it. I hope that, uh, inshallah, there are some of the points. If what, sorry? Okay. No problem. I mean, of course, yani muhaddir in waqaf, they should do it by that the people know the time. 
that. Let's say if you, for example, how we go, for example, sometimes we are traveling or something, when we know Adhan, we, we give Adhan late. So if something happens once in a while, it's okay. First Adhan. First Adhan is, first Adhan you do not have a fixed time. Someone do it for one hour before 40 minutes, 30 minutes because it's not the one, the actual one. The actual one is the second one. So that is okay, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik shalallahu ilaha illa. Astaghfirullah wa tabu ilaikum. Jazakumullahu khairan.